Shalom. My name is Moray Ishaya Yisrael. From the House of Israel in Cincinnati, Ohio, 2330 Kemper Lane, bringing to you in 40 minutes or less. In 40 minutes or less, I will prove beyond a shadow of a doubt the word of Yahweh. Who is this Yahweh? Yahweh is the creator of the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that is therein. Yahweh is the Elohim of our fathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yisrael, whom you may know as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh is our judge. Yahweh is our lawgiver. Yahweh is our king who will save us. Today's program, we're going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt, according to the word of Yahweh, that is 30 days in every month. It is true. Many of our people today are on under the erroneous truth, impression. That some months have 29 days, some months have 30 days, and then we even have other people who believe that it's 28 days in a month, 31 days in a month, and all these things are false. And in 40 minutes or less, as we've been telling you, because that's all it takes is 40. We will prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is only 30 days in every month. And we're going to start this lesson in the book of Genesis, the seventh chapter. This is the first time you would even read a date in the scriptures, even though Many people will tell you there's no calendar in the scriptures. As you will learn and as you will see, that is various years, real years, real months, real days of the month, real weeks in the scriptures. Where do you think the months, the years, the weeks come from today? They come from the scriptures. Now watch what it says in the book of Genesis, the seventh chapter. <clears throat> and I will give you seven witnesses to prove what I'm telling you is the truth. In the book of Genesis, the seventh chapter, the 11th verse, This is what it says. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open. So the Almighty thought it was very necessary, very important to date this event. To date it to the extent he let you know exactly the time that he opened up the heavens and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And keep that in your mind. The second month, the 17th day of the month. That's when the windows of heaven were open. This is when Noah, his sons, and their wives, and everything that Noah took into the ark, they all went into the ark together. But then the creator will let us know when the windows of heaven will stop. And watch what it says. In the book of Genesis, the eighth chapter, one through four. And Elohim remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And Elohim made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters are saved. 
The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained, and the waters were turned from off the earth continually. And after the end of a hundred and fifty days, the waters were abated, and the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Aaron. So we see here that the windows are stopped, the rain was restrained, and that time period was 150 days. From the second month, the 17th day of the month, to the seventh month, 17th day of the month. And what do you have? 150 days. And what is 150 days? In the scriptures, well, it don't take a rocket scientist to understand this. This is five months. And not just five months, 30 days in each month. So right here during the time of Noah, we can clearly see that 150 days is five months. And let's continue to examine this matter. As I told you before, that not only there is a controversy between brethren, and it don't have to be, but Yahweh even said he has a controversy with his people because there's no truth, no mercy, no judgment in the land. And we're going to have to return back to the truth. And we are, and we will in 40 minutes or less. If you want the truth, here is the truth. Witness number two is the law, the law of mourning. How long Do the law tell us that we have to mourn our dead? Well, an example of this law is in the book of Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, and we're going to start at the 10th verse. When thou goest forth to war against thy enemy, and Yahweh thy Elohim have delivered them into thy hands, and thou hast taken them captive, and sees among the captives a beautiful woman, and has a desire unto her, that thou wouldest have her to thy wife. Then thou shalt bring her home to thy house. She shall shave her head, pare her nails, and she shall put off the raiment of her captivity from off her, and shall remain in the house, and bewail her father and her mother a full month. And after that, thou shalt go in unto her, be her husband, she shall be thy wife. This is a full month that she was to bewail. And what do the word bewail mean? It means to mourn her father. And her mother. We're not heathens. We, we have to mourn our dead. Just like we have to bury our dead. But what is a full month? Well, we just read what a month was in the book of Genesis. The seventh chapter, the Genesis, the eighth chapter, during the time of Noah. But I know that's not enough evidence. So let me show you the law morning so you can see exactly what's a full month. Since there's only one manner of law. In the book of Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter, let's see what this full month is. Irregardless of what word you put with the word full month, it's only going to be one measure of time. And this is the measure of time. 
in the book of Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter, we're going to start reading at the fifth verse so you can understand this. This is what it says. So Moshe, the servant of Yahweh, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of Yahweh. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his scepter unto this day. And Moshe was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. And the children of Israel wept, which means they mourned, for Moshe in the plains of Moab 30 days. And why 30 days? Because 30 days is a full month. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moshe were ended. This is all you're going to read about a month. You're not going to read no other measurement of time. So why are we even speaking of another measure of time in the scriptures when it don't exist in the scriptures? And our people know it don't exist. Irregardless of what other people are doing, who cares? But you must care what the covenant people are doing, exercising themselves in the word of Yahweh. We showed you Noah, which was the first witness. We showed you the law of mourning, which was the second witness. We showed you the law of mourning during the time of Moshe, which is the third witness, the fourth witness, is the high priest, Aaron, in the book of Numbers, the 20th chapter. Let us turn there. And let's see if we will see something different with our father Aaron. In the book of Numbers 20, this is what it says. And we're going to start reading The 25th verse. Take Aaron and Eleazar, his son. Bring them up unto Mount Hor. Strip Aaron of his garments. Put them upon Eleazar, his son. And Aaron shall be gathered unto his people and shall die there. And Moshe did as Yahweh commanded. And they went up into Mount Hor in the sight of all the congregation. And Moshe stripped Aaron of his garments, put them upon Eleazar the son, and Aaron died there in the top of the mount. And Moshe and Eleazar came down from the mount. And when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, they mourned for Aaron 30 days, even all the house of Israel. As I said, as we already informed you, that's all you're going to read is 30 days. And if you fear Yah and tremble at his word, as he said, we should. This will mean a great deal to you. Our fifth witness. And that scripture is the prophet Ezekiel. Let us turn there. Ezekiel, the fourth chapter. In the book of Ezekiel, the fourth chapter, And this is a prophecy. And watch what this prophecy says. 
In the book of Ezekiel, the fourth chapter, we're going to start reading at the fourth verse. It says, Lie thou also upon thy left side, and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it, according to the number of days that thou shalt lie upon it, thou shalt bear their iniquity. For I've laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of the days, 390 days. So shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And this is very peculiar because here it is, these 390 days that he laid on his side, represent the number of years that Israel will have to deal with their iniquity. And what is 390 days? Well, it's simple. 390 days in the scriptures, and this is a prophecy. So he's foretelling the future. It's 13 30-day months. Now, we already seen during the time of Noah five 30 day months. And then during the time of mourning, one just 30 day month. And now during the time of Ezekiel, we're seeing 13 30 day months. So ask yourself how many other 30 day months must you see before you begin to circumcise your heart unto Yahweh. That's 390 days. But what if you had 389 days? That's not 13 straight months. That would contradict the scriptures. Because the scripture said 390 days. And it's 30 days each month. And there's no other mathematical way. You can make one month 50 days, another month 60 days, another month 40 days. That's not the word of Yahweh. Yahweh is perfect. And we must be perfect with him. The sixth witness. Because all this will be done in 40 minutes or less. The sixth witness is our foremother, Esther, whose Hebrew name is Hadassah. In the book of Esther, the first chapter, let us see if any time was altered, anything changed, it wasn't changed during the time of Ezekiel, and that was a prophecy. It wasn't changed during the time of Moses and Aaron. As a matter of fact, it's been 30 days since the time of Noah when the scriptures first recorded a month. In the book of Esther, the first chapter, watch what this says, and we're going to start reading the third verse. In the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, talking about Ahusuerus the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him when he showed the riches of his honorable kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even a hundred and fourscore days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan, the palace. 
both unto the great and small, seven days, in the court of the garden of the king's palace. So here it is. We talked about 150 days during the time of Noah, 30 days during the time of mourning with Aaron, with Moshe, and the captive woman. We talked about 13 straight months, which was a 390 days during the time of Ezekiel. Now we in Esther. And Esther is talking about a hundred and four score days. And what is that? A hundred and four score days, according to the scriptures, is 180 days. And what is 180 days? Well, 180 days is six months. It's six months. 30 days each month. So we done showed you five months. We done showed you six months. We done showed you 13 months. We even showed you one month. And the last witness, which is the seventh witness, is the prophet Daniel. And let us go to the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter. And let's see if Daniel would say anything different. I may add that the prophet Daniel prophesied during his time, what will befall us during our time. And let's see if anything he said will alter today's time. And I'm here to tell you, Yahweh is consistent. His truth is consistent he don't change what have already been is now. And what shall be have already been. And Yahweh require that which is past. In the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter, this is what it says. And we're going to read, start reading at the 10th verse. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand, and what will they understand? The truth. Watch what it says. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that make it desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. And what is 1,290 days? As I stated before, this is not hard at all. Well, 1,290 days is 43 30-day months. That's what it is. Exactly. Not a day short. Not a day more, but 30, 43, 30 day months. There are no months that would indicate 29 days. There are not in the scriptures. Out of your mouth, yes, but not in the scriptures. There are no months that would indicate 28 days. There are no months that would indicate 31 days. Either you're going to follow Yahweh or other people. Until our next program, Yahweh love you, and so do I. Shalom.